Hello there, and welcome to this, the 20th of my 30-day challenge Facebook Lives. My name's Gina Gardner. I'm an international best-selling author. I'm an empowerment and relationship coach, and I work strategically with businesses, helping them to get the best out of their people to become more profitable and actually have work -life, better work-life balance. I was on Facebook earlier this, this morning, and, and one of the groups that I belong to, they posted the question, what would you like to say, what advice would you give to that 18-year-old you? And what difference would you expect that to make? And I thought about it, and I thought about the person I was when I was 18, and the person I am now. And how, if I had the wisdom that I had now at 18, how my life would be, have been very, very different. So at 18, I just left school. I was, um, I'd started uh, college, I was overweight, I was very, um, I lacked huge amount of confidence about myself, I had really bad eczema and I really was a bit of a mess and at 18 I had no sense of who I was, I didn't particularly like myself and I certainly didn't have any confidence that the decisions that I made were the right ones. I went off to college having passed my A-levels and I felt very, very shy, very diffident about what I wanted to do. I had a complete change in terms of direction because uh, the job I'd wanted to do, they, um, I wanted to teach cookery and they said I couldn't do that because of the, the really bad eczema that I'd had. And I was devastated at the time. Um, however, it turned out to be the greatest thing uh, that could happen. The universe was really looking after me. So what advice would I give that 18 year old? What are the lessons that I've learned that would have helped that 18 year old grow and to have confidence and to take charge of her life? And it's an interesting question because even if I'd given her that advice, I'm not sure that I, she was ready to listen. I think if you're a youngster and you're listening to this, one of the things I would say, one of the pieces of advice is, if you want to do something, go and find somebody who does it well and model them. Look for the masters. But before I get onto that, I think the biggest lesson that I can give anybody, particularly my 18 year old self, is to recognize my worth, to recognize I am enough and I was enough when I was 18. I just didn't know it. And so I was worried about what would other people think. I didn't look after myself because I didn't value who I was. I had no confidence that actually um, that I could do anything pretty well. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I had no idea whether I'd be good at it. Um, I knew I liked helping people. But I was very diffident about how I would do and I used to sweat the small stuff. I would worry about the smallest things. So my second piece of advice, which fits in with the first, would be don't sweat the small stuff because in time, often very short amount of time, that that small stuff that's kept you awake at night that you've worried about, that you've said, well, what if or you know, why and how, 24 hours later, starts to feel different. A week later, feels very different. A month later, you've forgotten about it. And actually, most of us spend a lot of time worrying about the small stuff. Um, and we allow that to cloud the quality of the, uh, the time that we're having in that day, that week. We make mountains out of molehills. And so I think another great piece of advice to that younger me would be look to make molehills out of mountains and not the other way around. And to ask yourself, you know, at the end of the day, will this situation feel like a mountain or a molehill? In a week's time, will it be a mountain or a molehill? What about a month or a year or at the end of your life? If you're gonna downgrade it, why not downgrade it now? Why wait? So 
a great sense of self-worth, believing in yourself, valuing your, you, who you are. And if you don't like your body, for example, just value it for its functionality. I've always hated my thighs. My brother used to call me thunder thighs. Um, in fact, they were never that bad, but it was just his way of getting at me. And he knew that if he said that, he would press my buttons and I'd get upset. And he got a reaction. But my goodness me, when I couldn't walk, I would have given anything for my legs to have worked better. I didn't matter what shape or what size they are. I happen to have very long legs, 33 inside leg. But actually, it doesn't matter how long they are if they're not working properly. So valuing yourself, valuing your body, loving who you are. Now, I need to make a distinction because loving does not mean being indulgent. And one of the things that I used to do when I was unhappy is I would eat. And of course, carrots and celery and all of those things never do it for you, do they? It had to be cake or biscuits or crisps. And although I never became obese, I was overweight. And even more, I was unhappy about being the weight I was. But instead of doing something about it and loving myself and honoring my body, I continued to put rubbish in it. And one of the things I've learned over the years is if you want to value your body and your health, you have to look after it. I have a naturally very sweet tooth. My favorite food is cake. But I do recognize it doesn't do you any good to keep eating cake. And so part of this is about if you value yourself, you will look after yourself. If you value yourself, you will actually put boundaries in place. You won't let other people treat you badly. And more importantly, you won't treat yourself badly. The most critical person that most people have in their lives is them. Think about the voice in your head, the one that goes, shouldn't have done that, or why didn't you do whatever it is? And that voice can go round and round and round and drive you up the wall. If you've done something wrong, make amends, say you're sorry, learn the lesson, let it go. If you can't physically make amends for whatever it is that's happened, then learn from it and make sure you don't make that same mistake again. Life is full of what people perceive as failures, but we learn in those moments, don't we? We learn much more when things go wrong than when things go right. And so I think the human condition is that we learn through experience and sometimes that experience will be a negative one. But it's not the end of the world, so long as you learn from it. So all of these things which may sound different are part of the same thing for me. Is The, the advice to my 18-year-old self is recognise that whilst you don't have all of the skills and expertise that you are going to gain through your lifetime, that you are effectively just a being of potential. And it's your choice what you do. It's your choice whether you look for the things that you can do and you have got, or those things which you can't do and you haven't got. Whatever you focus on will feel bigger. And so that 18 year old, things felt like the end of the world, for example, when I was told I couldn't teach cookery because of my skin. And I was desperately unhappy because what I had thought was in place, my college place and, and everything that went with that was suddenly up in the air. As it happened, it did me a huge favor because if I'd been teaching cookery all the time, I'd have got bored very quickly. As it happened, I went into primary education, although I'm primary, secondary trained. And I loved the fact that I could teach all of the subjects. I loved the fact that there was such a variety. And then I was promoted very early and I had the opportunity to run my own school for 21 years. I suspect that that wouldn't have happened if I had been a cookery teacher and I would have got very bored and probably have got very disillusioned in my choice as to what I was desperately wanting to do. Because I didn't know what I didn't know. 
And that's the problem with youth, isn't it? We don't know until we learn something different. And that something different becomes our reality. So valuing yourself, having belief in yourself, not being arrogant, because belief in yourself is not about um, being arrogant, but it is about valuing who you are, what skills and attributes and experience you have, and being open to the fact that it can be even better, that you can build on that. At 18, you're not fully formed yet, in a sense that you've got some skills that school has given you, education has given you, and those are the building blocks with which you will build your life. And at 18, I think on one level, I knew it all. And what I realise is as you grow older, what you recognise is the more you know, the more you know that there's more to know. Um, but when you're young, you think you know it all, you think you've got the answers, and you think that, that there is only one way. Whereas when you get older with experience, you recognize that there's any number of ways to reach the destination that you want. And, you know, it, there isn't a right way or a wrong way. There's just different ways and that you can relax about making sure that it happens in a particular way. Because life has a, a way of showing you that however you want things to be, things will turn up in your life that will change your direction. And my experience is that more often than not, huge good comes out of that. Huge opportunities come out of change. Whereas when you're 18, you, well, I certainly did, had a very set view of this is what I was going to do and this is what my future was going to look like and, 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 and. And the reality was it turned out to be somewhat different. So valuing yourself not sweating the small stuff because you get hooked up in that. And for me, those two things and the reason I've, I've put them together is because much of what I worried about about myself and what other people would think was small stuff. It didn't actually matter. It didn't, you know, I didn't have to do things to fit in with other people. Um, that felt really, really important. And I know that as a teenager, particularly, I tried too hard to fit in. What I recognize now is that actually people who stand out from the crowd for whatever reason um, tend to do better. And of course, that's not, let's rephrase that. People who stand out of the crowd doing something positive tend to do better. There's plenty of people who stand out from the crowd for something negative. And that's not something I'm suggesting that any of you would want to do. Um, and it's you know, a good idea to do. What I'd be really grateful for is if you in the comment box would put, what advice would you give your 18 year old self? What are the lessons that you'd like to pass on to that younger you? If you've got teenage children, I have no doubt that you have spent a lot of time trying to pass on your wisdom to them. Are they ready to hear? Most people who are in their later teenage years are less inclined to listen to people who are much older than them trying to tell them um, how they should do things. And for me, I think there's a, a lot to be said. You have to experience it because in that experience, is the growth. Now that might sound at odds with my earlier remark about if you want to do something well, go and watch a master, go and talk to them and model what they do. But that comes with the experience of knowing what it is you want. And I think for many young people, they don't know what they want, but they are so keen to, um, to latch onto something which feels right that they close their mind to other possibilities. And so my third piece of advice is, I would tell my 18 year old me to be far more open to the possibilities that life offers, to live from a place of confidence that it will be okay, rather than being fearful that if I go that way or that way, then will I manage, will I cope, will it be okay? And what I've learned is you can cope pretty well with what life throws at you, so long as 
you have a good sense of who you are and you value yourself. And so for me, those three things become very, very closely tied up. So let us know what you think. That would be great. Thank you very much. Now, why have I got this challenge? 30 days doing Facebook Live. Um, and it's because I have set up um, the Thrive Together Tribe. Now, it's a, a, a membership group for, for like-minded people, people who want to get the best out of life, who want to be confident, happy, and fulfilled, and also who want to work with other like-minded people, who want the support of a group who will validate them and who will see them and who will challenge them, but in a safe, non-judgmental environment. Now, there is a, a structured program of videos, activity books, and themed journals, um, all around getting the best relationship with yourself, um, learning about yourself and looking at your beliefs and making sure that they're all empowering ones. Looking at how you can become more successful, how you can have a consistently happier life, finding your purpose. And it's all about, in a sense, helping you on your spiritual journey to recognize you are enough, and that you have enormous talents and um, expertise and skills, that you are an amazing, creative, unique human being. Now, it's built on the principles of my latest bestseller, Thriving Not Surviving, The Five Secret Pathways to Happiness, Success and Fulfillment. And you can get a free digital download of that by going to my website, genuinely-u.com. That's genuinely-u.com. If you want to have a, a trial of the belonging to the Thrive Together membership group, then you can try it out for a month for a dollar. Um, and you can try out the resources, you can join the interactive live coaching sessions, which happen twice a month, and see whether it's for you. Whatever you decide, I wish you the very best of luck. Remember, free digital download of the book from uh, genuinely-u.com and come and join us on the Thrive Tribe. My mission is to positively impact on a million people within the next five years. I'd really love your help. Please help by sharing these videos, by sharing the links, uh, and by coming and joining us and talking to your friends and your colleagues about what we're trying to achieve, which is, if you like, to, in our small way, to be a counterbalance to all the negativity, the violence, the hate, the division that's going on. My role, as I see it, is to help develop the spiritual matriarchs and patriarchs, the leaders of families, communities, society. And I hope that you will feel that that's a great thing to do. And if you want a super future for our children, we've got to do something to actually stem the tide of negativity. So please come and join me. This is Gina Gardner. I'm sending you love and I hope that you'll join me on the next live uh, Facebook live. Take care now. Bye.